Oh hey, today we'll be taking a look at E3 2022. Now before we begin, I just want to note that we'll only be taking a look at some of the more major E3 presentations, such as the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, the Sony State of Play, all of those. Also, I'll be saying my opinions on these presentations, whether how some certain games look and how they were presented, whether they were good or bad, all of that pizzazz. So please don't take them all too seriously. Anyway, let's dive right in. First up is Sony's State of Play on June 2, starting things off with the announcement of the Resident Evil 4 Remake, which is set to launch on March 24, 2023. The original Resident Evil 4 is one of the highly anticipated, if not one of the best games of all time. Now, I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan, but I have a ton of respect for the series. While the trailer only showed cutscenes, we pretty much know how a remake of a Resident Evil game would look like. The original Resi 4 has this sort of brownish tone. While the game has its scary moments, the brownish color just doesn't age well. While here, it looks even more scary with a darker, scarier ambiance. Resident Evil Village and No Man's Sky are set to launch soon on the PSVR 2. From what I've heard, the original PSVR version for No Man's Sky wasn't great. So hopefully the PSVR 2 will justify the VR experience of No Man's Sky. Horizon Forbidden West is getting a major update and the gameplay showcase for the upcoming Horizon Call of the Mountain, also launching on the PSVR 2. Spider-Man Remastered is coming to PC. I can only imagine how many mods will be available for this game. There's so much room for creativity in a game like this. Given how well Death Stranding, God of War, and Horizon Zero Dawn were on PC, there's a good chance this game will be eye-catching. However, I wanted the original Spider-Man PS4 and PC. It's mainly because I prefer Peter Parker's face on the original compared to the remastered version, but I could go on for 20 minutes. Stray looks awesome. I love the dystopian atmosphere and all, and the environment feels massive since we're playing with the perspective of a cat. I'm more of a dog person, but I'm willing to give this game a try, if I have the budget. The Callisto Protocol. It looks fine, it's just another dead space. The only thing I remember here in this trailer is the health neck. Roller Dome looks like a pretty wild third person shooter, I love it. Eternites is a mix between a dating and an action game. It looks great graphically, but I don't ever see myself playing this game. Street Fighter 6 got a new trailer, and wow. I love the stunning new visual design, and the adventure mode where you're exploring an open environment definitely buying this game if I have the chance. PlayStation fans, if you don't have a Nintendo console but want to play a Zelda game, here's Tunic. Honestly, a fantastic looking game. A great mix of Dark Souls and Zelda, but with a charming art style. Same goes for Season, the art style just looks charming and relaxing. And finally, we end things off with Final Fantasy 16. It looks awesome. Everything just feels so epic. And I really love the pacing in the trailer. I also like the UI shown in the gameplay. It doesn't look too cluttered up and looks pretty organized. So that's State of Play this 2022. Honestly, a pretty good showcase. They showed a handful of quality looking games, definitely must have tiles. I like that they're bringing some of their exclusive tiles to the PSVR too. Uh, VR games aren't given much attention compared to just standard titles, so hopefully this will give VR more recognition. However, most of the games we've already heard of. The entire showcase was pretty much a remake of an old game, PS4 titles coming to PSVR 2 and PC, and the new games, besides Final Fantasy 16 and Street Fighter 6, didn't really click to me. Next is Summer Game Fest 2022, starting off with another trailer for Street Fighter 6, this time showing Gil. It's awesome to see him back. Uh, one complaint though, why does Gil look so young compared to the returning fighters? Next is Aliens Dark Descent. It looks okay, though the entire trailer was full of cutscenes, until a short amount of gameplay footage is shown at the very end of the trailer. Calissa Protocol is shown again, and Jeff Keighley stop reminding me of Health Neck. Hi everyone, in 2019, 
Modern warfare changed everything. Yeah, just like pouring water on a rock, it changed nothing. A gameplay footage of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Not this Modern Warfare 2, this Modern Warfare 2. Confusing, isn't it? Flashback 2 was shown off. Uh, which fire Fort Soul is? Like, Jesus, man. This is the third space game shown off this E3. And they decided to talk about the game for over 4 minutes. Dwayne Johnson run to remind you of the upcoming Black Adam movie, and literally, this went on for too long. Outriders World Slayer, a montage of Nintendo games that we already heard of, Fall Guys announced that they're not dead and their game is now free to play, Stormgate, Highwater, American Arcadia, a new trailer for Dead Island 2, Goat Simulator 3, Goat Simulator 2, this was a pretty bizarre trailer. At first I thought it was just a mock-up of the Dead Island 2 trailer, until the Agricultural Revolution returned. Marvel Midnight Suns, a gameplay trailer for Cophead's upcoming DLC, really looking forward to it. Neon Lights looks pretty rad, it's like if you take Persona and turn it into a first-person shooter, it looks great. Midnight Fight Express, Warframe gets another update, Honkai Star Rail, New look at Honkai Star Rail, an upcoming open world space RPG. Yeah, a lot of space today. <laughs> you got that right. Zenless Zone Zero, TMNT Shredder's Revenge looks awesome, and the fact that you can play up to six players locally is insane. It reminds me a lot of Turtles in Time on the SNES. Definitely a must have title to play with friends and family. Super People, Humankind, Cultures of Latin America, One Piece Odyssey, Soul Hackers 2, Capcom Arcade Stadium 2. I hope that they no longer have to make you pay arcade titles separately, because that was annoying in the first arcade stadium. You would have to buy arcade titles separately. That would make more sense if it were in mobile devices. Mario Strikers Battle League finally released. Haven't played it yet because I am poor. Metal Hellslinger looks promising. The Quarry and Dining Gale, a demo for Saints Row Boss Factory, Warhammer, Layers of Fierce looks awesome, Gotham Knights, and finally, the end things off with the announcement of The Last of Us multiplayer, which appears to be its own standalone game, The Last of Us show on HBO, and The Last of Us Part 1 remake. What? A remaster of The Last of Us exists, and it still looks excellent to this date. Why do we need a remake? Doesn't the game already look graphically fantastic? And what else is there to remake? It's nice that The Last of Us Part 1 is still getting support, but a remake is unnecessary because the original's gameplay still holds up today. I'm not pissed, just confused. Also, why didn't they just announce this in State of Play? That was Summer Game Fest. It was fine. The only stuff that I remember were Street Fighter 6, Heltneck, Modern Warfare 2, Cuphead DLC, Shredder's Revenge, The Last of Us, and the sheer abundance of space games. And that was like a quarter of the game's show. Most of the games, especially the space ones, can just kind of blend in together. It just feels like they keep showing the same damn trailer all over again. Alright, got a little upset there. Hopefully Xbox has something good to show. They start the presentation with a gameplay chair for Redfall, following with Yes! We finally get a one minute of gameplay footage of Silk Song, the long awaited sequel to Hollow Knight. And it's going to be a day one Game Pass title. This is amazing! I love Hollow Knight. I spent a lot of time playing the game, and looking at the trailer, the gameplay just looks so fluid. Originally, Silk Song was supposed to be just a DLC for Hollow Knight, and the fact that it is its own game now. Oh boy, I'm really looking forward to what it has in store for us. High in Life looks weird, but I kinda like it. Xbox Game Pass subscribers can unlock every character in all of Riot's games. League of Legends, Valorant, the rest. I'm not into all of these games, but I gotta admit, this is a huge thing for League and Valorant fans. A Plague Tale Requiem, Forza Motorsport is back baby, and it looks awesome. Microsoft Flight Simulator is getting an expanded edition featuring helicopters and Halo. Overwatch 2 is coming out on October 4 in early access and free to play. Aura History Unfold. Elder Scrolls Online is getting another expansion. Forza Horizon 5 is getting a Hot Wheels expansion and it looks like a lot of fun. 
Arc 2 featuring Vin Diesel and Dinosaurs. No gameplay, just Vin Diesel and Dinosaurs. A gameplay trailer for Scorn and it looks scary. Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, Minecraft Legends. It looks a bit familiar with Minecraft Dungeons and that game released two years ago. Lightyear Frontier, Gunfire Reborn, the last case of Benedict Fox looks like a nice mix of a game like Inside and the Ori series, and it looks fantastic. As Dusk Falls, Naraka Blade Point is coming to Xbox as a launch exclusive after being a huge hit on PC. Pentiment, Grounded, Araban Shadow Legacy looks awesome. Diablo 4 gets a gameplay showcase. Sea of Thieves Season 7, Ravenlock, Cocoon, Wolong, Fallen Dynasty. Yes! Persona is finally coming to Xbox. They include Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal. They're the best versions of these three Persona games, and I'm down. I played Persona 3 Portable on the PSP and had a lot of fun memories playing the game. Playing the game on a modern console with a larger screen is a dream. Now, I'm excited to announce a special partnership between Xbox Game Studios and one of the greatest creative minds and innovators in our industry. Someone that I have admired for many years. Today, I'm pleased to share we will be working together to create a brand new experience like we've never seen before. Thank you, Kojima-san. Hideo Kojima just appeared out of nowhere and announced that they're working on a new game. I'm, I mean, seriously, what's the point of this? And why are they showing this on a presentation? They didn't show anything. They could have just announced this on like Twitter or something and the impact would remain the same. And finally, we end things off with Bethesda's Starfield. It's Fallout, but in space. It looks okay. The game looks a bit generic, yet expensive, or that's just what Todd Howard said. It just looks like another No Man's Sky, but with upgraded graphics. We saw little in the gameplay, and none of it really speaks out to me. It just feels so slow and sluggish. The character customization stuff? We've already seen those things in previous Bethesda titles. And that is Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase. Majority of the games didn't really convince me. I'd say it's a bit lacking compared to Summer Games Fest in terms of the games shown. At least in Summer Games Fest, they showed new games that are at least worth a purchase. Here, while they did show new games, they were quite forgettable. It's not a bad presentation, they made some crazy announcements here and there. It's just that their offerings aren't the most memorable. Next is Capcom Showcase, starting off with a new trailer for Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, featuring a new locale, new monsters, and... Gormagala is back! My favorite monster in the Monster Hunter series. It's so cool to see him back. And it's also cool to see Espinosa return, a monster that originated from Monster Hunter Frontier, which is the first spin-off title in the Monster Hunter franchise. We also Tsujimoto reveals the first free tile update for Sunbreak featuring Lucent Targakuga returning from Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. A demo for Sunbreak released after the presentation. Street Fighter 6 and Capcom Fighting Collection were mentioned, but they didn't show anything new about these games. A little more info on Capcom Arcade's second stadium. In addition to a bundle that features all 32 titles, each title is available for individual purchase and features. Damn it! At least Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior is made available for free for a limited time, which I immediately downloaded on my PS4, but I'm still mad. Exo Primal is the upcoming dinosaur PvP shooter, and it looks like a lot of fun. They shot off a new gameplay trailer, and they also announced that there will be a closed network test on PC in July and you can sign up on the game's website. Capcom showed off a trailer for Dragon's Dogma's 10th anniversary. They also announced that there will be an upcoming presentation for the anniversary and we'll get to them in a few moments. A new DLC for Resident Evil Village featuring a new story mode, a mercenaries add-on, and third person mode for the main story. It's nice to be able to play the main story in third person, but I think a lot of the horror goes away in this perspective. I think a lot of the horror elements of the game lie in first person. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing, I just kind of think of it that way. 
The DLC will be releasing on October 28th alongside Resident Evil Reverse, which was supposed to launch with Village originally until it got delayed. They showed very little gameplay footage for the Resident Evil 4 Remake, and then we end the presentation with Resident Evil 2, 3 Remake, and 7 getting upgrades for the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. The presentation wasn't bad, they did show some good stuff, but they mentioned games and they didn't show anything new about them. So what's the point of mentioning them when you have nothing to show? Pretty much all their games we already know about and have been or will be released. They didn't show anything new besides DLC for Monster Hunter Rise and Resident Evil 8. Square Enix didn't have their own presentation this E3. What we do have is a Final Fantasy VII presentation in commemoration of the game's 25th anniversary. Starting with the Steam version of Final Fantasy VII Integrate which was released shortly after the presentation. A quick little montage of some merch. Season 3 of Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, alright cool, moving on. A new gameplay trailer for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, which contains the events throughout the entire Final Fantasy VII timeline. I hope this game will eventually make its way to home consoles, considering this is another remake of a home console game. There will also be a closed beta test for this game later this year. A remaster of Crisis Core? Yes! Five years ago. Where are you? What happened to you? I'm trying so hard to find you. Sorry. Feel like I failed you. It's been confirmed. Final Fantasy VII is getting its own trilogy and they reveal Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I might be getting a heart attack. The presentation was short but they showed a ton of crazy announcements. It was great, that's pretty much all I can say. I'm happy that we're getting a Crisis Core remaster and a Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy. Again, there's not much I can say about the presentation. It was amazing. As mentioned earlier, Dragon's Dogma held their own presentation for the game's 10th anniversary. They start off with the development of Dragon's Dogma. This went on for more than 10 minutes, but hey, Dragon's Dogma 2 is finally announced. That was it. So that was E3 2022. It was disappointing. Majority of the games shown don't really leave an impression to me or probably to anyone who has watched any of the E3 presentations. Games like Starfield are all about being a massive world. When they were shown, they just feel boring. Sometimes it's obvious that they're struggling to keep up with the latest standards. And the other new games, they're fine, but they don't seem to be convincing enough to warrant a purchase. The overall presentations just lack the quality of their games. It becomes more and more questionable as to why games are like this now. It's all about quantity. But no matter how disappointing this year's E3 is, I'd still look forward to the next calamity.